One of the really unique workflow features inside of Bitwig Studio is the inspector panel. And this inspector panel changes on the fly based on what you select. So if I go here and I select an audio track, we get particular settings that we can adjust from the inspector. If I go to an instrument track, we get particular settings we can adjust from there. If I go into an arranger clip versus uh, a note clip, specifically I could go and I could select a couple of notes. And you can constantly see that things in the inspector are changing and adjusting depending on what is the last thing I clicked. And this is really useful when you have a larger screen, or I should say you're able to see everything when you're zoomed all the way out. And on the video, I'm sure this will look blurry, but on my screen, this is all still very clear. And this is very useful because I can keep this inspector panel open. It doesn't take up that much space and I can adjust a lot of features and parameters right from the inspector. So it speeds up the time. Uh, for certain tasks at least. And I know that with 2.0, some things have kind of been removed from there, but then those things you can actually pin. Uh, and again, this all changes depending on where you are selected as well. You can see how my menu changes based on where I'm clicking and what I've decided to pin up there to the toolbar. But the point of this video is actually to address a question I got about the device inspector panel and one of the features in there. So if I go in here to and let's just zoom this in by one so that's maybe a little clearer for you guys. If I go in here and I select the tool device, you'll notice that we have these two little options here. And one would think that this would have to do with like pre or post fader maybe. Looking at that, that's what I would think. I think, oh, okay, so this is a post fader send. This changes it to pre fader send. No, that's not what's going on here at all. This has to do with modulation. And so obviously with the tool device here, we don't have any modulators set up and it's not modulating anything. And therefore it's just blank. And this is why I think it confuses some people because you think by clicking one or the other, it's maybe gonna make some kind of impact to the sound or the way your signal flow is working. Uh, not the case. The minute that you have something with a bunch of different modulators and or like macro controls, you're going to see how this thing works. So let's go and decrease this by one more. All right, so what we have are two options. One is in source to destination mode. The other is in destination to source mode. And again, when we talk about sources, we're talking about modulation sources. So here in this first panel, we can see all our different modulation sources. So starting here with the amplitude envelope generator, which we can find down here in the polysynth. And what this is showing us in the inspector are all of the destinations and the depths. The great thing about working with the inspector from the device panel is that we can change those things on the fly or we can even just go in here and get rid of things or we can go even a step further and we can modulate more parameters so if we wanted to have the amplitude envelope also modulating uh the reverb amount for whatever reason we could go in here and we could adjust that like so and now we could listen So that actually sounds kind of cool. I was figuring it was going to be terrible, but let's just say for the sake of example, it was terrible here. If I wanted to limit that range, I could bring it back from here. Or I could just go in and get rid of it entirely. But we can also then see where this is going to all of the destinations easily without having to go in here and attempt to do like right clicking stuff. That gets very confusing and difficult. But in Bitwig, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. It's like an Easter egg workflow kind of or work around. And I really like this. I like this option to be able to just delete things, add to it or change the range without having to go in, click, find it and drag accordingly. Uh, if we go and look at the other side, what we actually begin with are the destinations, and then we see the sources of modulation that are routed to said destination. So in this case, filter frequency. We find that here. We can see that something called low pass, classic LFO1, and classic LFO3 are all working on the filter frequency. And low pass is actually one of these macro controls here. And with the now the newer version and remote controls, things change a little bit. And maybe I'll show you that in just a second, but we could go in here and see, oh, okay, so low pass is corresponding to there. I could make the adjustment. Maybe the range is a bit too much, so I should go in here and bring that down a little bit. 
Okay, maybe that's a little bit more to my liking. Or again, I could go in and remove it. The downside is I can't actually select these and then make the adjustments as I could do here uh, before. So on this view here. So that's really what that's all about. Uh, let's just go in here and like add something new just so you can see it. We'll go and we'll add like a random. Like so, we can go and we can actually see that even for these modulators, we also have a specific little panel here. So I could change the name of this to like crazy. And then I could select either from here or down here and choose what I want this to modulate. So maybe we'll go in here and add, uh, yeah, let's use this and let's like crank that all the way up. You can see then the depth that's been set could go in here and maybe uh, turn bipolar off. Something like that we could set up quickly and easily. And then when we go back to the polysynth as a device, we see that it's been added in down here. So we'll pause the video real quick and talk about how this changes with remote controls. The big difference with the remote controls versus the macros is that we do not see the remote control set up here from the inspector view. If we want to go in and make adjustments or delete something, we actually have to bring up the little wrench icon here and make our changes. But this makes a lot of sense, mainly because these are going to be the entire range. You can't set a limited range with remote controls. But of course, we do still have the option to go in here and set up like a macro here. And then we will still see that and that works as we're used to it working. Um, or you know how it worked in the past for us with uh, Bitwig Studio version one. I go back to the device, boom, there it is. I could adjust the range, delete it, or even go in here and map this to uh, more locations if I wanted to do that. All right, so I hope that that answers some questions some of you may have had about the device inspector. And if you have any additional questions, like always, please feel free to ask. If it's something I think is uh, worth doing a video on, I am more than happy to do that. So uh, take it easy until the next video.